Rachel, thank you. So yeah, if you just give me two seconds, I will share my screen. Um, let me know if you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, today, my name's Katie Johnson. I am from um, Ashfield Health, which is a network of um, agencies that supports the pharmaceutical sector. So um, I'm part of the recruitment team. And on this presentation today, I was going to talk you through a bit of an introduction to what is medical communications. Um, who are we in Ashfield Health and in specifically Ashfield Medcoms? Um, and then to talk you through um, what do we look for in applicants and um, talk you through our graduate programme, which is called Allegro Right. Um, so yeah, just to talk through um, a bit more of each part that I'll talk through tonight. So predominantly um, we run a graduate programme called Allegro Write for aspiring medical writers. So on this presentation, I'll talk about what is medical writing, um, why we think medical writing through Ashfield Medcoms is the best route, a bit about the programme specifically and what we look for. So without further ado, I'll um, plow into things and just talk through what is medical writing. So Ashfield Health and um, the role of a medical writer within the medical communications industry is a service that supports the pharmaceutical sector in creating content um, that um, supports pharmaceutical companies in engaging with different audiences. So for example, um, clients will come to us with information such as clinical trials data, and they might want to get that work published in journals, or they may want to have that work discussed at a Congress. So we as medical writers will partner with the pharma companies and healthcare professionals to understand what it is they're trying to achieve to make sure that we're putting out the right communications at the right time in the right format um, to really meet those intended needs. So just to talk through some examples of the types of projects we do, um, we will collaborate with authors and external people to get um, manuscripts published in journals. We will create presentations for congresses, um, educational materials. So um, in terms of a, a typical project, um, when we support clients, they will have an idea of what they want to achieve. And the types of work that we produce for them can be split into three main categories. So publications is probably the biggest area. I'd say about 50% of the work that we do supports um, clients in getting work published. So that could be um, getting and working on abstracts. It could be looking at how data is presented at congresses. Um, and it could be getting work published in journals such as the Lancet and New England Medical Journal. The second category I would say is called medical affairs and that broadly encompasses all of the meetings activities. So if you think about um, congresses, advisory boards and symposiums, as medical writers you could create anything from the presentations that the speakers talk through, the infographics and the posters and the interactive materials at the stand. It could be the websites and the surveys that delegates are forwarded to. It could be the marketing and the collateral that's given out to attendees of the event. It's kind of the whole meetings activity is a big section of what we cover. And this also feeds onto interactive materials. So for example, if our audience is a patient group, we may create interactive presentations or we may create training materials that will allow them to understand in more detail the real life implications of what this new finding or what this new product will do in the marketplace. So depending on what the client's looking to achieve, the role of a medical writer could at any one time cover all of those areas or it could be firmly one thing or another. So there's lots of variety in the role um, and typically every account team will support a different pharma client in a different therapy area and as a medical writer you might work across a couple of account teams at any one time. 
So just to talk about Ashfield Medcoms in a bit more detail. So Ashfield Health as an overall business um, has multiple agencies within it. So for example, in the UK, we have four agencies, two work within PR, one works within public affairs, uh, but then we have Ashfield Medcoms, which is our biggest division. And this is what the area of the business that houses all of our medical writers. So um, Ashfield Medcoms has teams across the UK, the US and um, Germany and other sort of European countries. But generally speaking, we have about 800 people um, in the business and we work across medical and scientific services. So our clients are pharma companies, some biotech and medical device companies. And in terms of um, the products that we work of, as of last year, we had a, on average around 425 different projects and different products. So that would be covering a whole host of different therapy areas for various um, project work. And in a typical year, this gives you a snapshot of all of the materials and deliverables that you as a medical writer would create within the business. So that's working on strategic management and consultancy projects. That could be more than a thousand standalone meetings, um, publication planning, you know, 4,500. I already mentioned that that is quite a big chunk of all of our output um, is to get you know, take complex data and have it published and accessible in various different areas. So the business itself will look at um, the medical communication strategy and tactics, identifying um, platforms and plans in order to deliver projects to clients. Um, and we'll also look at various communication tools. So obviously off the back of the pandemic, a lot of the events that would have been taking place face to face have now been hosted via you know, digital and virtual platforms. And we've started to look more into digital and virtual ways that we can engage with audiences like healthcare professionals and patient groups. So that's again, looking at new lines of projects such as e-learning modules and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'd say overall, we are now starting to see a return and a hybrid model of face-to-face -face meetings, but we're also seeing an increased look at digital and virtual projects as well. Um, so just feeding on to introduce you to the Allegro programme. So kind of just giving you an, an idea of where it came from. Um, we initially launched the Allegro pro programme in 2018 in a way to um, bring people into the business and to give you exposure to all the different areas of work we cover. Um, so as I mentioned, when you are a medical writer, you will work on an account and depending on what that client's looking for, the type of work and therapy areas um, that you cover in that account will differ. And there's so many different account teams across the business that when we created um, Allegro, the purpose for us was to bring people in and give you um, training, but also give you exposure to different account teams within the business so that you can experience firsthand the full breadth and variety of everything that's involved in medical writing. So the programme is called Allegro Write, and that's for our entry level writers. Um, and over the past couple of years, we've exp expanded the Allegro program through to our US offices. And we've also recently created a new program called Allegro Excel, um, which is designed to springboard people that are senior medical writer through to the more advanced levels of um, becoming senior um, and scientific directors. And more recently, we've been recognized and awarded the Princess Royal Trust training award um you know for the whole curriculum that we've created um, so that's just a little bit more about the two programs and say if you were coming to the end of your degrees and you thought maybe you were keen to move away from the bench but wanted to keep related to new science you know brand new science coming from pharma clients and you have a passion for communication medical writing and a 
job like the Allegro Write programme um, really is a great way to stay connected to that new science, but be able to see more effectively the real world implications of what this means. So just to talk briefly through the mechanics of the job, when you first joined the programme, you'd go through the recruitment process. Um, and I'll move on in a few more slides to talk about the recruitment process and what we look for. But essentially, um, once you have been offered a role, you join the business. And the first two months of the training is what we call core skills. And during those eight weeks of core skills, you'll learn all the main forms of writing style that you would cover as a medical writer. So things like presentations, manuscripts, posters, abstracts. Um, each week you'll learn a couple of different writing styles. And you'll also learn um, business processes, you know, industry terminology, compliance, some of the more business skills as well. And that training is delivered through a mixture of face-to-face -face training sessions, some online webinars, some group projects, and there's quite a bit of individual research and project work involved in that as well. And every week you will have a catch up with your manager to talk about the work that you've delivered and understand what's going well, where can you improve upon. And when we bring in our associate writers uh, through Allegro Write, we actually have three start dates a year. And in each start date, we bring in around 20 people. So for those first eight weeks, you'll be part of a group cohort and you'll be having the same sort of training sessions and, and going through that process together. Um, then at the end of that eight weeks, you would move desks out of the training zone and you would join one of our accounts teams to begin the first of two placements. So as I mentioned across the agency, we have upwards of 30 different account teams, you know, upwards of 100 different clients and projects that we're working on. So initially you would join one team to work with them for five months. And as an example, the first team you sit with could be working on a diabetes publications account. So working with that team, you'll be integrated and work on deliverables to get that work published. So um, a lot of medical writing is very teamwork focused. There may be projects with mini projects within them. So you may take ownership over um, certain aspects of a project, but then as a team together, you'll come to link all of those mini tasks together to form the bigger project. So there's lots of communication and teamwork involved. So say you would work with that team on that account for five months. Then at the end of that five months, you would move desks again. Um, and we carefully will choose your placements to ensure that you're covering as much of a diverse area as possible. So for example, this next team you work with, they could be working on a medical affairs and education um, heart disease account. So moving teams, your focus would shift to learning a new form of writing style, delivering content as a fully integrated member of that team, you know, working towards their deadlines. It may be an opportunity to travel to those congresses. Um, and the overall goal is by the time you finish that 12 months, you will have an idea of what your strengths and preferences are, what kind of writer you want to be moving forward. And that's when you'll have a conversation with your manager to find a more longer term account team for you to join. So at this point, we see all kinds of um, balances. Some people will get to the end and say that they um, really prefer one style of writing over another and can they progress in that area. Um, other people will say they really want to maintain a variety of work and can they continue covering lots of areas. Um, other people will say that they are agnostic towards the style of writing that they want to do. Um, but they really want to become a subject expert in a certain disease area. So we're able to look at all of those different factors um, at the end of that 12 months to find a longer term home for you. Um, 
and the training doesn't stop there you know the whole purpose of the allegro write program is to take you from associate writer to medical writer in 12 months but once you've finished that 12 months there's still a big opportunity to develop and progress and um, you'll still work and learn new things on the job as you start to look at your medical writer promotion to take you to senior medical writer and so on. So there's all kinds of eventualities at the end of that 12 months. Um, over the past three and a half, coming up to four years, we've hired um, 170 people through this route on the Allegro Write programme. And we're now starting to see um, our first few people um, who were, who've made it to senior uh, medical writer level who are now uh, being part of that Allegro Excel programme for that next springboard of uh, training to take them to that next step in their development. So um, it really is a tried and tested method now, which is a great route into the industry. Um, and just to kind of focus a bit more as to why we think it's the preferred route um, if you were considering a route into medical writing. So from our perspective, it's a fast track programme. Um, the average in the industry typically uh, would be anywhere from 18 months to two years to take you from associate writer to medical writer. So um, our programme condenses that. So it is more of a structured and intense element of training, but it's designed to really um, yeah, expedite and, and get you to that promotion in a quicker period of time. Um, is quality assured through the volume of people we've had through and the awards that we've won, um, we can assure that the trainers coming in to teach you are of the best quality internally and also the external trainers we bring through. Um, it's a great career opportunity if you are looking for a career outside of the lab. Um, it really allows you to develop your scientific understanding across various therapy areas, as well as stay close to new science and support on lots of new and emerging drugs coming to the market. Um, it's a tailored approach based on your individual strengths. So we know that not everybody develops and progresses at the same pace. So we're able to tailor the program to different people's needs. We also know that not every writing style is for everyone and the whole purpose of the programme for us is to give you enough exposure and experiences throughout that first 12 months to help you come to those decisions on your own based off from your own knowledge. Um, it's a highly supportive learning environment so when you join the programme you'll have a line manager who's your manager throughout the year but also once you go out into the account team for placements you'll have a mentor and a buddy so they're there to ensure that the work that you're doing um, is appropriate to the level of your understanding that they are people that have been through the program so they have they've been in your shoes they will be able to answer any questions you might have because they've been through the process um, and I'd also say that we are specialists in nurturing talent um, our retention rate in terms of the number of people that stay within the business and continue on to more senior roles is about 85%. Um, so although Allegro is the sort of preferred route into the business, even once you're at that next level of medical writer, your training development continues on from there. So do you have the right qualities to join um, Allegro Write and also to become a medical writer more generally? Um, so in terms of what we look for, um, we look for first class communicators who are willing to learn and suitable for the fast track programme. You know, it might be that you're in a, a research or a lab heavy degree, but do you enjoy talking to peers or talking to people outside, you know, telling them about what you're learning. Um, do you have a passion for science and improving patients' lives? So fundamentally, all of the work we do will have an impact on a patient audience at some point, whether it's educating physicians on how to use a product, when to use a product, whether it's educating patients directly or their caregivers, or whether it's um, ensuring that 
new products are available on the market that will have you know, a positive impact on people's treatment plans. So having that in the back of your mind always of you know, everything you do eventually will have an impact on a patient. Um, people who are motivated and driven, I say is a key thing um, in medical writing, but for any entry level role, there's a huge amount of new areas to learn and to have that get up and go and that inquisitiveness to really want to develop and learn. Um, you're in a supported environment, but it, things like the projects can be fast paced. So to have that motivation to succeed is definitely a key thing. Um, other elements of the role are to be open to feedback um, and use that as an opportunity to reach your full potential. Um, as a associate medical writer, but even as an experienced medical writer, everything you do will receive feedback. Um, and it's always constructive and it's always delivered in a way to make you better. Because um, ultimately, the work is very team based. And even if multiple people have worked on the same project, when that goes out externally, it will look like one person's written it. So quite often there's a lot of feedback and you know revisiting drafts to ensure that the tone and that the information really meets what we're trying to achieve. So um, being able to adapt and be resilient to feedback is a key thing. Um, and then I'd say the final point is to be open-minded and to um, enjoy working in dynamic teams. So as I mentioned, we have multiple offices in various locations. Our clients are global and the audiences we work on are vast. So in terms of the teams and the dynamics that we work on, they can be very um, mixed. So having that open minded of working with different colleagues, different cultures, different time zones, you know, all of those things feed into what we look for. Now, just to talk in a bit more detail about how we select our candidates. So I'm going to keep this quite general because um, within Ashfield, we run assessment centres which have certain elements to it. Um, but I'll just talk more generally about, you know, if you are looking to get into medical writing, what are the key things that hiring managers look for and how can you tailor your um, application? So looking through CVs and cover letters, I would say um, working within a, um, well, well, working as a student, you know, when you come to the end of your degree, the job market is always competitive. So I would recommend always applying with a cover letter when you send applications in. So when you're coming to pull your CV together, it should be well presented and well formatted. Um, ensure that you're telling us the facts around, you know, what was your degree? What grades did you get? You know, um, you know further back, what were your A-levels? If it's higher education, you know, what did you get in your master's? What modules and subjects did you cover? Tell us about your experience outside of academia too. So we are looking at your um, application as a whole. So we want to know about your part-time roles, your volunteering, your hobbies, all of those things are important to include. Um, I would say a lot of people get caught up on that whole, you know, two page thing. Um, I think two pages ample space, you know, to really give a good indication to all of those areas that you covered. Um, if you format it well and you're concise with the information you add in. Um, Ensure that there are no typos, you know, any grammatical errors and, or that anything's um, misaligned. And I would say important things to cover in your cover letter are a case of tailoring it to the role that you've applied to. Um, particularly for a medical writing role, it's a really good opportunity to showcase your writing skills in a format which, you know, you may not get to really flex in the structure of a CV, but the cover letter really is an opportunity to um, sort of showcase um, your writing skills and also to outline why you're interested in becoming a medical writer. Say if you can draw upon any experiences or skills. Um, 
in our particular process, uh, and I'm sure it's common for all medical writing roles, you will likely have to do a writing test at some point. Um, so for example, our writing task has got two sections to it. Uh, the first section, we would give you a manuscript with the abstract missing and ask you to create the abstract for it. And the second section is a patient summary in which we would give you information on a disease and ask you to summarize it as if you were talking to a patient audience. So across those two tasks, we're assessing your ability to change and adapt your language style to suit different audiences. As that's quite reflective of what you would do as a medical writer, you may take complex data from a clinical trial. And for one project, you could end up with a really creative patient engagement piece. And for another project, you may end up with a very technical, highly scientific materials. So top tips for us on the writing test, I would say always follow the brief. Um, you'll always be given clear instructions. So um, that is a key thing as ultimately when you are in the role, you'll always be meeting a client brief, um, you know, meeting a client deadline. So following the instructions is key. Um, try to look at examples online for guidance. Um, most of the time, you know, we in Ashfield, and I assume most other agencies, will give you an idea ahead of doing the test what that should involve. So um, read into what you know a clinical abstract should look like, for example. Um, proofread and use all the time allocated for the task. Um, you may think you've finished ahead of time, but honestly spend that time proofreading, quality checking to make sure it is the best piece of work you can deliver. Um, and with that, Think about time management, you know, try leave time at the end to account for those um, changes and edits. And also practice. Um, obviously, with a life sciences degree, you will have experience of writing for essays and for an academic audience. But think about writing in different areas. Um, Online group activities. So for our particular um, recruitment process, we do assessment centres and the assessment centres for us, we are really looking at your soft skills such as teamwork, communication. Um, and one of the ways we do this is through a group activity. So you'd be split into small teams and given a, a project and together in your project, you'll come up with a presentation to relay to the other team. So key things that we're looking out for is to understand how well you would fit into a team as medical writing is very collaborative. So we're looking at how well you collaborate, how well you manage the project, how do you communicate effectively with your peers. Um, also to be respectful of your team, um, make yourself heard, but not too much. So. Um, without sounding cliche and, you know, without using the Goldilocks analogy, you know, being too loud might not be right, being too quiet may not be right. And it's kind of a case of um, looking at your role within that team, um, as there's always different functions between the leaders, the communicators, the organisers. Um, so we want you to communicate um, with the team and find that balance. Um, and then just to continue on from that into some more interview hints and tips. So in Ashfield, we use competency-based interviews. And if you're unfamiliar with competency-based interviews, they follow the STAR technique, um, which stands for situation, task, action, and result. So ahead of any interview, I would recommend Googling, researching, you know, the STAR technique and competency-based interviews. Um, for the interview on our side, we are looking to hear about your experiences, whether that be through work or education, that you can draw upon and that have given you transferable skills suitable to this role. So it could be things like, you know, working in hospitality or retail, problem solving, dealing with customers, time management, you know, juggling all those responsibilities. Um, it might be communicating, whether it's um, 
faculties that you've been associated with through unis or societies, you know, like university newsletters or your own blogs, you know, how have you built your transferable skills outside of academia? Um, and then I would also say, look at the company values in advance to think about how can you display those? Um, for example, a value of Ashfields is energy, you know, so how can you bring energy to the role? What experiences have you had in which you had to use energy to get a task done? Um, and then I would say the other thing is to think about being clear and concise with your answers. Um, obviously, interviews are a more high pressure situation, but I'd say it's really worthwhile thinking in advance, sort of pre-planning what examples you might want to use and almost checking off in your mind mentally the, the S, T, A and R of that star answer to help keep you on track and with, you know, to avoid you going off on a tangent. Um, so yeah, those hopefully are some good tips into um, how to prepare your application when applying to medical writing roles and also what we look for when we're hiring into the Allegro programme. Um, and just to quickly introduce you to the Allegro team. So if you were joining the Allegro Write programme, um, it's actually headed up by uh, Neil, who is the vice president, and Nikki, who is the programme director. Um, myself and Katie Swaggerty are supports in the role, so um, they're on standby. And Sophie Cook, she's one of our senior medical writers who delivers a lot of the training and um, mentors throughout the programme. Um, and say if you're interested in Ashfield or the Allegra programme and would like to know a bit more, um, these are all ways that you can keep in touch with us. Um, we are very active on social media across um, LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram. Um, we also have a dedicated website that talks in more detail about the Allegro Write programme as well as the Allegro Excel programme. There's some blogs, uh, so people have written some first-hand accounts of you know, how they found the programme. And you can also email me directly on the recruitment inbox, which is ahrecruitment at ashfieldhealth.com. So it might be that you've still got a couple of semesters left or you've still got a couple of years left and you're thinking about you know, what to do at the end of that. Feel free to reach out. Um, and what I do is I send um, an email out sort of once a quarter to anybody who's been in touch to update you on. Um, when the next round of recruitments are taking place and sort of going forward from there. So that's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to cover um, in terms of an introduction to medical writing as an industry and a role, um, a bit more about the Allegro Write programme, as well as the um, recruitment process or hints and tips to applying. So I'm going to stop my um, sharing my screen now and if anybody has any questions feel free to ask away. No. Um, can, oh, someone's asked a question, can I ask what educational background is required for the application and is it limited to any specific subject area? So for us coming into the programme, we would look for people to have a 2-1 as a minimum in a life sciences degree. So anything biology, biomedical, uh, biochemistry, sort of anything life sciences um, with a BSc as a minimum. If that helps answer that question. If there is anything, shout up. But Thomas, let, let me know if you want to wrap up at all. Oh, sorry. How would you suggest getting writing experience? So there's lots of ways, really. Um, when you come into the business, we don't expect you to have any formal writing experience. Um, but say if you have had any, um, well, just an example of what other people have done in the past. Some people will have blogs 
whether that's a science blog or a fashion blog or in any kind of blog. Other people will have been involved with societies through uni, such as the um, newspaper or sort of communications or outreach materials. Um, other people will have done volunteering in which they might have created posters or newsletters. Um, so in terms of formal experience, we wouldn't say that you need any, but if you do have the opportunity to try practice or doing some outreach materials outside of just your assessments for modules, that's great. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be science related. We've had people that have worked um, in publishing or, you know, sort of mentoring, kind of anything that really embellishes and, and gives you extra experience in communicating would be all really valuable transferable skills coming into medical writing um, and the purpose of the Allegro program for us is to give you a strong foundation in all of those core skills for you to develop in. Um, but yeah I'd say there are um, lots of medical communications businesses across the UK some do um, work experience some will have online webinars in which you can get a better idea of the types of materials you would be producing as a writer yeah great well if we uh, if we have no more questions. Are you happy to, to wrap it up there, Katie? Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, well, thank you very much to Katie um, for using her Monday evening to come and share that really, really useful information with you all. I hope you found it really, um, really useful and in, in to take forward, especially if you look to apply for something in this in this direction. So, uh, yep, thank you all for coming along. I will stop the recording now and then I'm going to ask you